Well, you look very moody, Bev. <laughs> oh, world's so moody. Um, the coast is 100 metres away and it's barely visible in fog. Uh, another boat has turned up, looks like another Bavaria from a casual glance, but it's hard to make out because it's too covered in fog. We've got fishing boats passing around us, you can hear them talking to port control, trying to get in and they can't see where they're going, port control can't see what they're doing, nobody can see anything, there's about six big ships moving around as well. It's all very slightly crazy around here at the minute, so the fog has taken all the heat out of the air as well, there's just no warmth here at the minute, so uh, as soon as I finish this little situation update, what do they call them, sit reps, uh, something like that, as soon as I finish I'm going in there and turn the heat on because it's living freezing up here, I'm telling you. But we're taking, um, taking a few pictures, things like that. One little thing that, going back to old fashioned things, it's a hand bearing compass. And I was saying to Gainer that one of the things about this you cannot do with um, your iPad and GPS and the rest of it is that other boat over there was reported as being on a particular bearing. I couldn't see it. I put this up, looked down the bearing, boom, there was a shadow in the mist. That was the boat. So sometimes you always do work too. Well, whenever Beverly and I are not sailing, uh, Beverly edits video for all her work. So say we're in a marina, then she starts editing straight away. Whereas when we're at an anchorage, uh, she waits till the batteries are charged. Uh, that's the house batteries. Um, once they're charged, then um, she edits episodes for you. Um, so one of the other projects that I do, and I, uh, I will tell you now, any serious uh, yachter, racer, look away because it's curtains for us. So what are you doing with that? What is it? Uh, basically, um, I bought some poppers with the uh, Kofi money uh, to do uh, fish TV and then I had some more uh, poppers left so I thought do you know what Beverly and I could do with a curtain for our bathroom yes because there's no curtain rail in the bathroom no we've got no curtain rail or anything like that and um, you know if you've got guests aboard they want a bit more privacy and also when people are walking up and down the pontoons our salty lass uh, panel obscures most of it but um, if people are coming from that direction, they can see into the bathroom. And if you're having a shower or a boat shower, then, you know, nah, let's get a curtain up. So, yeah, all you serious uh, yachties, just look away now. So the uh, poppers are in. And uh, there's all sorted. And then when we want to put it away... I'm just going to roll it. You don't have to, you can just bunch it. Well, bunch it, roll it, whatever. Just need to put it over here. Now I'm only going to use a bit of... Um, it's a uh, pipe cleaner. For now. But I'll sort out something a bit more fancy later. But that'll do me for now. It's curtains for that job then. Certainly is. Curtains for us and curtains for that. Well, we've uh, left Rosslare and the engine's on because we have the wind dead on our nose and we've got a bit of foul current against us. The tide is due to flip sometime in the next hour and we're hoping that when it does it will just carry us around Cairnsore Point and we will finally be on the south coast. Um, we do need to get into Kilmore fairly smartly because bad weather is due in tonight. Um, if everything goes to plan Kilmore is two or three hours away from here so and it's only about 11 o'clock in the morning so if, if everything goes to plan we should be in Kilmore sometime around lunch. Fingers um. crossed. My biggest concern, because I'm on the helm today, but my biggest concern is uh, reducing visibility. Um, 
But realistically, I can still see the windmills on console point, um, and there. about five nautical miles away so I have got plenty of visibility but um, I'm just concerned that you know it could be reducing it's been a bit pea soupy right here the last couple of days yeah but to be honest I actually think that the visibility is going to increase because this morning <laughs> when I went out I could not see Rosslare Harbour yeah and that's only like that's only like a half a mile away. So that was half a mile away. So since then we did get Rosslare Harbour and we can see it in beautiful uh, relief. Um, well, so now I'm, over, now I'm complaining about something that's five nautical miles away. So I think I'm being a bit stupid. Plus once we go around the corner, if we um, if we avoid Barrels Cardinal, then we can go west from there and it's pretty straight, it's a pretty safe run from that point. Yeah. We're also going to be changing our angle of, um, our angle Seconds. Yeah. Um, so you never know, I might be able to get those sails up. Ah, I'll pull the bloody thing off as well. <laughs> hoping that we'd be able to get this, the sail up but <laughs> we've got quite a lot of swell on at the moment you might notice the horizon bouncing up and down a lot yeah and um, we haven't got sufficient wind to hold the sail out uh, so the, the sail will be bouncing around like no to business we could, we, we could fit a preventer, but for the length of time we're going to have to be on this, it's not worth doing. Yeah. We're talking like about an hour and a bit. Yeah. Well, Beverly and I are sailing, but I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone, but the engine's still on. Now, it's in neutral, uh, but it's still on. Just because Beverly and ours apprehension level is quite high at the moment, um, when I was doing the passage plan around um, the point and everything, I had said to Beverly, right, okay, we'll be leaving a bit later. But we could s see in the weather app that the um, weather was going to deteriorate the longer we slept. So um, I decided, right, okay, we're going to seize the moment and um, we're going to go. Um, you know, we'll be fine. So, I've seized the moment, that's fair enough. But now, uh, we're actually outside Kilmore Quay uh, because we can't get in uh, because we haven't got enough tide. So, I'm actually in the weather that I wanted to avoid. So, I've still, I've got white caps to the side of me uh, and that's why we've got the engine on. It's just there's days that you just feel that things are against you. Um, you know, at the start of the season, we had a lot of southerlies, so we had that against us. We've had a couple of days of just nothing else but fog. So, and now we've got round the corner, so we are at least on the southern um, side of uh, Ireland. So we feel great that we've achieved that, but now we can't get into Kilmore and we really do need some fuel and um, I, and I've been told that fuel later on um, can be difficult. I know I'm going to get some fuel at Cork, but I've just got all these things that I'm juggling and it, just sometimes the journey can be very, very frustrating. in at Kilmore Quay and um, as we were coming in 
Beverly just thought that everything was going wrong and she said because um, we were told to go on to the hammerhead and she said to me she said that hammerhead's going to be uh, occupied I know it and I said no it's not no it's not have faith so we had a little bet and uh, basically if it was occupied uh, I would buy Beverly dinner and if uh, it wasn't occupied um, Beverly would buy me dinner well it looks like I'm gonna have to buy Beverly her dinner in Kilmore Quay and uh, for an absolutely beautiful um, docking maneuver see our previous episode yeah we'll put a link to it up here um, it's not quite as warm this time as it was last year is it absolutely not which is why I've got my coat on and she's got her big fleece on and I've gone one stage for her and kept my woolly hat on <laughs> I have to be honest uh, coming over we were still in mullions we were um, because the weather is still pretty cold mm. uh, we had another uh, number of issues coming over uh, first of all is the tidal information um, oh god yeah don't get me started on that um, that chart and the chart downstairs both produce different tidal information from each other so we looked up and reads as the decider uh, to see which one was right and it turned out that reads had different tidal information from both of them so none of them were agreeing um we went round the corner at um is it minus two hours dover high water minus three we left rossler at minus two we came around the corner at carnsore point yeah so it was minus two now um on the good news in reeds it says that the tide is in your favour for that location and i would agree with them at high, dover high water minus two I would agree with them. Uh, then, um, that because one, that one downstairs said it was another hour later, mm. or another hour earlier. Sorry, that was an hour later. That was an hour earlier. Yeah. Um, so it was Reeds that was correct. Yeah. However, when we got round the corner, the tides were all over the show. Yes. Sometimes the tide would be in our favour. I think the thing is that the um, the big sand bridge here, St Patrick's Bridge, uh, the tide turns in it early, two hours earlier. Um, so when you're at Carnesaur Point, the tide's just turning in your favour. At the bridge, it seems to be turning and going almost like a counter current. And I think as you come in, some of that counter current gets you. Yeah, so there was quite a lot of issues with tide and just navigating it. But other than that, uh, it was just annoying that Initially, I had the tide, the wind in my face, and I thought it's all right. As soon as we turn the corner, the wind is going to be on the beam or on, on, on the quarter or something like that. We can get the sail up. And um, as soon again, as, we, as soon as we turned the corner, the wind stayed in our face. <laughs> we did try hoisting the sail, and the boom was going all over the place. The swells were quite large, so we came through the salty islands. We came through salty sound, kind of appropriate for salty lass. But there you go. I'll just point out that it's salty, spelt differently. Um, we went through the sound and the sound was quite good. Uh, yes, um, and uh, we definitely had uh, tide in our favour, as it, it says in reeds. In reeds, and also the, um, I think the rock shelves and the reefs also took a lot of the swell out. Mm. There was very little swell and salty sound. Now we arrive 
on the other side of the saltings. And we thought, you know what, that's it, we've got it made, there's Kilmore, boom, it's only about a mile and a half away, we'll be in in 10 minutes. So we contacted the harbour master <laughs> and he said that realistically there wasn't enough water and we were at a falling tide. Yeah. So he wanted the uh, tide to be rising. We had, we had arrived bang on low tide. Oh, it's bang on low tide. We were there practically to the minute. To low tide. <laughs> so he wanted us to stay. Outside, so we had to stay out in the salty stuff, and there was a there was a bit of grinding of teeth and things like that. Because... So we did do a bit of sailing. <laughs> we did do a bit of sailing and sort of sailed around a bit, um, but that was about it. And then, and, and then we just came in and, and, and we tied up. So uh, that was well and good. Now, and we tied up to a. Um, an, it's not really a disused lifeboat, but it's a, it's an, a model from a much earlier era. They just don't use this kind of lifeboat anymore. And having been on it, I can see why it's it's very archaic in its layout and the methods. The big one next to it is such a different beast, mm. isn't it? It's it's I mean like they're they're worlds yeah. apart. Um, but we we the tides were wrong coming around the point the information about the tides were wrong the wind wasn't playing ball we had big swells well we couldn't get over st patrick's bridge like we thought because it just wasn't working out we wound up in the wrong place we got here bang on low tide and i said you know what's going to happen don't you? you're going to go in there and that space that he told you to go to there'll be a flipping boat parked in it and there I, was and there was <laughs> so. it was just that sort of day it was but it does give us the unique distinction of having been, I suspect, one of the very, very few boats that have mer that have rafted up on a lifeboat. <laughs> How many people go into a harbour and raft up on a lifeboat? Not many, I suspect, but we've done it. <laughs> yeah, but we knew that the right lifeboat wasn't going to go out, so it's not like... Uh... It's not the proper lifeboat. It is over there, and that one is there. So they're very close to each other, but we know which one's which. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're in Kilmore Quay and Kilmore Quay is a great place uh, for fuel. So if you're coming from, say, Milford Haven or something like that, then, you know, this is your good first stop for picking up fuel. So yeah, there is a fuel dock here and you put a card in, it's pay at the pump sort of thing. Uh, but the uh, other good thing there is here is a really, really large chandler. I think it's one of the biggest, if not the best, chandlers I've ever seen. Um, yeah, so... It's um, really, really good. So if you need any chandling needs and... Um, is, that a, is, that a, is, that, is that a nine or a verb or something? Chandling, if you need any chandling. Need any... Okay. So if you need anything from a chandler's then I really would recommend the Chandlers here at Kilmore Quay. I do do, but I quite like the verb of chandling, which is presumably <laughs> going to Chandlers and buy things. Uh -huh.